Welcome to the Century National Bank High School Football Game of the Week on WHIZ-TV, presented by Century National Bank. Whatever's on your project list, let's talk loans. In today's game, Coshocton travels to Crooksville to take on the ceramics. And brought to you in part by Kokona's Furniture and Masters First in South Zanesville. Zanesville and Route 79, just south of Heath, always making it easier for you to furnish your home. By Fink's Quality Cars and RVs, Fink's Harley-Davidson, Fink's Southside Collision, and Fink's Easy Leasing and Rental. By Norvell's Hearing Centers in Zanesville and Cambridge, always here for you. By Denny's Classic Diner. And by Foxfire Schools, free public alternative education serving students grades K through 12. Scoreboards are provided by the Fink's family of motor vehicles and services with instant replay coverage, courtesy the Ohio Educational Credit Union. 24-7 banking, convenience wherever and whenever you need it. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the WHIZ TV Game of the Week. Kevin Rao here tonight along with my good friend, the coach, Doug Clifford. And, Coach, homecoming for you. Of course, you were the head football coach here at Crooksville for a number of years. And I know this is one of your favorite places to see a game, period. Oh, it definitely is. I have so many good memories of, of being on the staff here. I was the head coach in the last four years. And prior to that, I was an assistant coach for 17. So uh, my life revolved around Kirksville football for a long time. Tonight, Coshocton comes to town in a matchup that next year will be a league game That's right. in the MVL, in the smaller division of the MVL. This year, it's a non-conference game. Both these teams struggling a little bit, although we saw Coshocton last week. We had them on our game of the week at Morgan, and they played really well, especially their defense. Well, their defense really rallied after that opening quarter. Uh, did a great job. Their offense turned on, put a lot of points on the board. But, you know, we were talking to the head, I was talking to the head coach from Coshocton, Jim Woodrum, and I think he told me their opponents are like 19 and 1. Yeah, they faced some uh, real the tough ones. This year. So they've, they've played a killer schedule up to this point. And so their record at one and four is very deceiving. They've played some uh, tough teams and have played well at times. Well, last week they put 60 points on the board. Yes, you don't often see a loss when you've scored 60, but New Lex scored 82. So <laughs> you actually lose by three touchdowns after having scored 60. Well, I, I, I I think the correlation there is if you give up 82, you always lose. <laughs> I think that's the that but, would be the important point. I agree yeah, with you. I, I think that 60 points uh, when I was at Kirksville, that was about seven games for yeah. us. Well, you and know what's most it, of them were, were wins. What's interesting about those 60 points is they didn't really do it through the air. No, no, they right had through. 18 passing plays that's and right. scored 60 points. Well, Kirksville's defense this year has had trouble stopping the run, and obviously. And, the Coshocton defense couldn't handle the passing attack at New Lex last week. So this should be quite a game. Well, you've got an offense, and as you mentioned, Crooksville can pass the ball a lot. The defense not so good on, against that Coshocton. <laughs> Other way around in terms of the running game for yep. Coshocton. And they're going to, with a couple of brothers, senior Cameron Johns is the B-back or the fullback uh, in a wing attack. He'll be right behind the quarterback. Braden Johns, his younger brother, Cameron's a senior, Braden's a junior. He'll run from the wing, and both those guys can score from a long way out. Oh, no doubt about it. I know I was talking to Jamie Brandon, who calls the defenses for Kirksville, and he said that, that Cameron Johns had 240 yards rushing last week uh, on, on the trap play up the middle. I mean, that, that, was, that was it. I mean, just to, that play alone, over and over and over. So, uh, yeah, they must have an outstanding running attack. So kicking it off will be Zach McLean. That's what he does for this team, and he's a good one. We have a rumor, though, he might not kick it all the way down the field, Coach. Well, that's a rumor, but I, I see uh, the formation here is pretty well evenly spread across the field. He's going to pooch it a little bit. Well, actually, it's going to carry. Wow, that's not a pooch. No. We were told it might be. I think we had some, some bad intel, and this is why they didn't want to kick it all the way down, because off to the races. We mentioned his name already, Braden Johns, and he's going to go all the way, 99 yards. Coach, this may set up the night for us. Well, you know, we, we talked to Coach Val, and he said that they may even try an onside kick to open the game, but based on 
Kashaka's formation, but they were they were evenly spread across the field. They looked like they were expecting some kind of a uh, trick play on the kickoff, and, and uh, <laughs> so they just decided to run it all the way back. Well, you know, it's interesting. He we was did. never touched. We heard first on side, and then we heard maybe a pooch kick away from the formation. I think, you know, they're rethinking that might be the play from now on. Well, I think I kicked that thing out of bounds every time on purpose. I don't <laughs> care if they gave the ball at, at, at the midfield straight. You're, you're better off. So we're, we're going to actually mark that down as 98 yards because that's where the ball was. His back foot went to the one. But a 98-yard kickoff return for Braden Johns, the junior, his brother Cameron, we're going to see a lot of tonight as well. In to do the kicking for Coshocton is Judah Nelson, sophomore. Snap, place, and the kick is good. And we spent, well, let's see, how much time did we take off the board? Seconds. There he goes. And so with 16 seconds, We've got the first score on the board. And, folks, I'm going to tell you, that is not going to be the last one no, tonight. No, no. I will almost guarantee it. We'll take a quick timeout with just 16 seconds off the board here in the first quarter. It's Coshocton 7, the hometown team, Crooksville nothing. Coshocton grabs the lead on the first kickoff of the night. There you're looking at, we talked about the fact that, Coach, that next year, Coshocton will be in the the smaller team division along with the ceramics. There you see the layout of things as Riverview joins, as does Meadowbrook and Coshocton. Uh, and I think it'll be advantageous. How do you feel about it as someone been around this league for a long time? Well, I think it'll be great. I think uh, Kirksville's going to get to play some teams uh, that they don't normally play. Uh, you're going to have new teams on the schedule that they may have never played before. Uh, and I think that will uh, create a lot of interest uh, and make, make the uh, season a little more enjoyable. Shockton's kickoff will be taken at about the seven-yard line by a number seven, and he's off to the races. And he's finally going to get hemmed in, or is he? Nope, he's going to cut back, and he may go. I don't know that I've ever seen this before, Coach. Well, I never have either. I've been to a lot of football games in my day. Amen. Never Holy sure. cow. Okay, first of all, this game may now take until about <laughs> 1 in the morning. But off to the races was Brady Brandon. Oh, man. Right up the gut. And I, I saw a, a Kashaktan guy get chopped down here. No, but it's by his, his own guy. His own guy. Yeah. And so he goes 93 yards. 11.27, so that was 17 seconds. Well, you know, I, I feel like a little unnecessary here as far as doing the explaining how the play went since we haven't had any plays. Nobody's run one yet. It's 11.27 to go into first quarter, and it's 7-6 to six right now. Kirksville going to run the muddle huddle with Brandon, the holder. I may have to back up to the pay window this week. <laughs> Again, I don't think I've ever seen that to start a ball game in my life as a fan or – Announcer or dad or player? I know I never have. <laughs> and the kick is good. We're going to take another timeout. I, you know what we got coming up, folks. Do don't, over. Do don't, over. Don't go anywhere. 7-7 seven, seven our score here in the very early going in Crooksville. Well, if you're just coming in to see the game, you have missed a lot in the early going. We've had kickoff return for a touchdown to start and then another kickoff return to tie it up. Kick that thing out of bounds. There you go. Now they're... <laughs> <laughs> and just jumping on it. There's that pooch we thought would have happened the first time around. And alertly jumping on it was Corbin Haley, sophomore running back. And good field position, but better than going all the way the other way, Coach. Oh, my, yes. It was a nice play by Corbin Haley. A lot of times a young player like that will think that's an opportunity to, uh, you know. Get his name in the paper. You bet. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be like Braden and run that thing all the way, but he did a nice job covering that thing up, protecting the football. Okay, so here we go with the wing T offense. They usually put someone in motion. Handoff goes off the right side, and again, that's the very talented Cameron Johns from his fullback or B back position. And not a lot fancy there, Coach. No, I think it was just big on big blocking that time. Uh, Nothing really fancy as far as blocking schemes. 
Just lock on who, who's every breath you can smell and, and stay locked on and give the ball to the studs. Quarterback is senior Gavin Williams, and he'll line up under center. One wide receiver. And this time they'll run the jet sweep coming this side. Going to have a penalty flag down, probably holding out here or blocking the back on the edge. And that is Braden Johns running the jet. And, Coach, they like to run that off tackle and kind of a trap yep. blocking scheme and then run the jet sweep. That's it. Uh, that's the scouting report we have. You have to stop uh, Cameron Johns up the middle, and you have to stop Braden around in on the jet sweep. So the penalty is against Coshocton, and it's marked off from the spot. We'll do second down all over again, but now it's going to be second and 13. Again, this is not a passing offense. They did throw the ball 18 times en route to 60 points. But you can see why they get a lot of yards on the ground there as Braden Johns a couple of yards after being hit initially as he pushes the pile forward. Strong guy. Well, his brother Braden was split wide that time with the flanker and had an extra back in the backfield for a lead block uh, as a lead blocker. But I'm sure Coach Valley will be thrilled to death to see uh, – Three yards and a cloud of dust from this guy. Sure. And something you'd like to see, too, is a third down and long, and it's third down and 10 after the penalty really set Kashokton back on a hold this on is, the edge. This is the key to playing a wing T team, putting them in, in situations where, you know, third and 10, they have to do something that they're not good at, and then you, you have to take advantage of that opportunity. I know when John Kelly, who started, who really started the success at Kishokton, was a former coach at John Glenn High School, they uh, they would run a reverse now. Third and ten, if the John Glenn would run a reverse. They, they would hardly ever throw the ball. We're going to get a timeout called by Kishokton as they want to assess things. Third and ten, we'll take it. A couple of kickoff returns for touchdowns, and that's where we are. 7-7 here at Crooksville. Back at Crooksville, third and long for Coshocton. Looking at the standings this week, Coach Sheridan still undefeated in the league after losing their first game of the year, a non-conference game against Licking Valley, but there's a lot of people lurking at one loss. This could be a very interesting MVL race this year. Other Four teams with one loss right behind Sheridan. Huge games going on tonight. And looking to pass, a little screen pass, but reading it and... Caden Miller. One of the best athletes in the league, so says his coach, showed why right there is he read that one all the way. Yes, he did. You can see on the replay. That little flanker screen underneath. The blocker did not get on Miller. He beat the block, went across his face. Too much speed for the flanker to block. If he was a good blocker, he'd be a guard. You know that. And, uh, <laughs> so that was a nice tackle. Great stop by the Kirksville defense that time. So going back to punt is their quarterback, Gavin Williams. And he'll get one near the, and it'll be downed by Braden Johns at the Crooksville 40 yard yep, line. Right 40, bounced right to him. So okay, is this the first play for Crooksville? First play for Crooksville. Yep. Quarter's almost half over and their offense isn't <laughs> on the field yet. <laughs> And again, we saw this offense took a little while to get going last week, but once it did, it put some points on the board. Well, here's a formation we did not see. We used to call this the stack eye formation with the re three receivers, one behind each other in that three-man position, empty backfield. We used that. We caught, had that same formation with the same terminology, but they were they were behind the quarterback. Kevin. Yeah, well, no, that's right. Yeah. That's the way it used to be. Yeah. And that fullback would be about a foot oh, from man, the quarterback. Right there. Yeah. He wasn't going to get the ball, but let's see what they do here. They're going to run a little screen behind it. Brandon's the guy with it, and he'll get about three yards on first play from scrimmage in this drive. But you can see he just backs up between two guys who are going to block for him. Yep. But good presence to come around on the back side of that by Cameron Johns. Well, usually your best player on offense oftentimes is one of your best players on defense. Cameron Johns proved that. It looks like. Coach Valley tried to get 
Brady Brandon just, you know, loose in space that time and see what they could pick up. Brandon in motion will run it on the jet sweep. And he's got some room. And shoestring tackle on the far side of the field. Nice tackle by Corbin Haley. It looked like Brandon was going to go for a lot more yards than that. You can see here, Coach. Yeah. Looks like he had some more, but good fighting through the block out there. Get the trip. Trip him up a little bit the legal way. Just got the toe. Sets up a third and four. And they'll run the back behind Miller this time. Long the outside count. linebackers sure look like they're pass rusher, and here they come. Pass yeah. going to be a little bit short. Try to get it to Brandon. Yep. Right about the sticks. Might have got rid of it a count more than he had to. So he could feel the pressure coming from behind him. Well, those outside linebackers for Kashokton, they didn't disguise their intentions whatsoever. They were lined up on the line of scrimmage and leaning toward the pass rush, and they came on the snap. So a punt situation for the Ceramics. Noah Dickerson is the punter. Man, dangerous don't, return guys back there. Yeah, don't punt it to anybody that has a three on their shirt. He was like 13, 23. I would. Fair, fair catch. catch going to be called for. <laughs> Tell you, he was wavering getting to the ball, but yes, he, was. he ends up getting there. Is that fair catch made by Nathan Favre, Jr.? So a long field this time for the Coshocton Redskins. Well, Nathan's fair catch uh, probably saved his team 10, maybe 15 yards. That ball probably would have bounced toward the end zone. Nice job to get that fair catch and sit underneath that thing with the guys bearing down on him. So again, the wing tee set up for quarterback Gavin Williams. And again, Braden Johns with it. You know, this is one of those teams where uh, you better tackle everybody. I mean, I, I would, if I if was coaching defense this week, I would have anybody who's where that fullback hit the hole, tackle him, right. tackle the bring man, come around, tackle the quarterback, catch their hand Anybody, off. especially they if all, they're – Yeah, they could all be ball carriers. If they're carrying out a fake or making a football move, you bet. go get them. Second down and eight. They're looking to throw, and it's complete. And off to the races. Let's see who can win the foot race. It's going to be the receiver. That is Isaac Shook, a 6'2", 190-pound tight end sophomore for Coshocton. Wow, that ball was right on the money. The receiver was behind the defensive back. Wow. And that pass goes... 78 yards for the score with 622 left in this first quarter. We didn't expect to see a lot of scoring on that side from the passing game, but maybe that's what they saved up for you that bet. play. I always thought the most dangerous passing team we would face would be a team like John Glenn because they don't pass very often, but when they did, it was usually a deep pass, and it's a great opportunity for your secondary to go to sleep. Extra point attempt. Up and good, and that makes it 14 to 7, Kashokton. But don't go anywhere, folks. We're going to have a lot more of that before <laughs> oh, the night's baby. over. We'll see who ends up with the winning score tonight. We probably won't see that till late in the fourth quarter, but so far, pretty exciting here. We'll be back right after this. Well, Coach, we've seen some things tonight so far that I don't know that we anticipated. We anticipated scoring. We did that. Not necessarily back-to-back -back kickoff returns. Not that. And then a long pass by Kashokton. I don't Not know that. that. We, yeah. <laughs> so I think it's a, that's three for three. Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, the Kirksville secondary, every pass from Kashokton is going to be a play-action pass. There's not going to be any drop-back, you know, passing game. It's going to be all play-action, so they have to be aware of that. Here's Brandon, and he tries to pick his spots in the middle of the field. He won't go the distance this time, but gets it out over the 30 where the Kirksville ceramics will – Get started. Of course, again, we mentioned this is a non-conference game tonight for Crooksville. They're not playing an MVL opponent until next year they will be. And they'll be in that so-called B division, mm -hmm. which is smaller schools. And I agree with you, Coach. I think it's going to be a great idea to give the smaller schools a chance to build a little bit. Well, the, the MVL has kind of uh, 
it's going in, you know, the teams are going opposite directions. Uh, the smaller schools are staying r extremely small, and the bigger schools have just, you know, dominated the conference. Running play right up the middle and some good yardage on first down. Crooksville trying to mix it up just a little bit as David Chapman on the carry. Had a good game last week. Crooksville's looking for their, their first first down of the night. It's a good start. So uh, it would be a long six to go. Four yards, we'll call it, for Chapman's carry on first down. Running the option, good stiff arm. Miller will get it close to the 40-yard line, still just a little bit short. Need a couple of yards for the first down there, but he runs every play like it's the last play in the fourth quarter. <laughs> That's what good, I like about him. Good blocking up front by the, the Crystal offensive line. There's only three down linemen for Kashaka. The outside linebackers that time were walked off in a passing situation or third down. They've been walking up to the line of scrimmage, and boy, there they are. It's 55, Hayden Shook, and 15, Corbin Haley. I mean, they're, uh, now they've walked off a little bit. They're going to play pass, it looks like. Miller to the fake, going to keep it, and he'll get the first down. Leans forward. Well, I'll tell you, Kashokton, I didn't think they'd be this strong around the edges. After you look at the scores, we don't really get a chance to look at any film. That's right. And I'll tell you what, they are they putting good, a good hit every single play. They have good team speed. They have some excellent and athletes on the team. I mean, their record, I think, is very deceptive. Oh, it, it, abs it absolutely is. And must have just given up a lot of big plays over the top, which will be interesting to see if Crooksville decides to try to pass it. Well, that and the level of their competition, like we said. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, 19 and 1 19 or whatever one. it was, yeah. Handoff left side this time for a few yards. Nice lead block that time by David Chapman. Carr runs it behind him. Tyler Carr, senior. Actually, they'll mark it back where his knee hit. A couple of yards on the carry. I just wonder if, you, if you know, their safeties don't play very deep. If Kirksville was going to say, I know they'll pass it. The question is whether they'll pass it downfield a little bit because. Well, there is, you know, there's no safety. I mean, there really are not. They're, they're playing linebackers. Yeah, they are. Handoff up the middle again, Carr, and he, he's going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Cameron Jones. Nice tackle. I mean, when you look at the speed on the Crooksville side with Brandon especially wide out and Rambo as well, and they're on this same side on the near sideline here, those guys can run a little bit. Well, it looks like the defensive philosophy for the Redskins on a passing situation is we're going to come get you. Right. And here they come. Miller, a little play action, and he'll find out in the flat, but it's going to be – little too far intended out there for Colt White, another guy that can run pretty well. You know, I'm, but I'm, you're right. If you watch the re – they're coming from the edges hard here. They're coach. coming from the edges. They had a, a blitz up the middle that time when the inside linebackers came. Uh, so they're not going to let Cade Miller sit back there and, and find those receivers that can get open so well. I mean, that receiver was open. Uh, but, you know, they're disrupting the timing. They may not get a sack all night, but they're going to disrupt the timing every chance they, they have. Back to kick it away for Kashokton, Noah Dickerson. Well, they get a little bit of pressure that time. Another fair catch called for and taken at about the 17-yard line. And that's where Kashokton will have it. Up a touchdown here in the early going. So it'd be interesting to see how Crooksville adjusts. I know the head coach there, a former player for you and a coach with you and I know Coach Valley likes to he'll, t he'll tinker a little bit my guess is they made some great adjustments last week well they did but you have to have the ball before you can start tinkering well, that's correct. You know, when, you, when you're going three and out and three and out you don't have much tinker time and this time in the pistol which we don't see a lot of and quarterback Kevin at that time Good assignment, football on the defense for Crooksville. Braden Cavaney. Nice job, Braden Cavaney. Yeah, absolutely, stayed home and made some good penetration. And he was leaning inside, but he was able to keep himself. Good athletic move to get back out on that tackle. So a loss on the play. Now this, this, uh, 
you know, this game has a long way to go. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, we, we'll be here that old time. <laughs> yeah, we will. And it may be here till midnight. <laughs> but this is a great opportunity for the, the Shramix defense to make a big play. Off tackle this time on the second and 15. And that is Cameron Johns, the senior brother. His younger brother is a wing back, and that's what they like to run him up the middle. He weighs 210, and I think he plays a lot bigger than that. Had a guard pull from the backside, lead through the hole that time. Third and eight. Third eight. So it'll be third down and eight, as Coach says. And boy, I tell you, we thought, well, this is tough for them. They can't pass it, and then they'll have a 72 yarder go for a touchdown. The so disadvantage of a play action pass team, and that's all they do is. All the time they're faking that play action, it gives your pass rusher the chance to, to make a move. So we'll see what happens. Well, this time, straight drop back this time. They're going to look over the middle, and it's going to be incomplete. I'll tell you, it wasn't <laughs> badly thrown. Looking for Braden Johns that time, but good coverage out there by Crooksville defense. I think it was Brandon on the coverage. Well, that's what Crooksville has to do. They have to keep you shocked and in these third and long situ situations and then play pass. Got a penalty call. Motion. Okay. That was that was all left armed right there. That call with the motion <laughs> and the, he just put the right arm in the holster for that call. Jinxie here, and again, good defense by Brandon, but would have been a first down had they been able to hang on there. Okay. See if they feel this punter. Last time it bounced and it bounced with a Kirksville hop. See what happens this time. Is that Colt White back? Holy cow. A high snap. They're gonna, he's going to try to run for it. No, kick it. He's allowed to do that. That is always a little dangerous to do that, though. And then a sideways bounce, neutral bounce. And the thing you got to watch for on the defense there, Coach, we talked about a little bit last week, was you can't, just because he takes off running, you can't hit him. No. If he's going to still punt it. And that is, sometimes teams will do that to try to draw the penalty. You know, I don't know if he, if that was a called play or he did that because it was a high snap. I mean, the ball just nearly went over his head. Yeah. Well, a pretty composed young man to be able to make that play and then still kick it away. But Definitely. Good field position for the Ceramics at their own 49. Let's see if they can figure out. They're going to go empty backfield and back to that stack. Now, sometimes then they'll go away from this stack over to the guy and hope see they get. See they get to the top of the field? Yeah, that single coverage. I'd be there. throwing it to him deep. I mean, they're playing pretty close coverage out there. Instead, they're going to try the jet sweep. Brandon going to retreat and then cut it back up. And he'll get into Coshocton territory for the first time tonight if you don't count a kickoff return. I think we have a hanky on the field, and I think it's holding against the ceramics. And you are exactly right. Couldn't tell on that replay where it was. I didn't, didn't look like it was the player out in front. But a spot foul will be marked off. The referee on the far sideline made the call. So it may well have been one of the uh, perimeter people. There's a split end over there, uh, but that was all. So all the way back to the 38-yard line. They've got to get it to the 41 in Coshocton territory. So about 21 yards to go. Chapman, he's got no place to go. Cameron Johns all the way in, but then we're going to get a penalty flag thrown late, maybe a face mask. Hayden, Might have grabbed him high. Hayden Shook was uh, not fooled by that personal, personal foul. foul and it is mask. a face mask against Kashokton, so that'll get a first down out of it, I believe. I think he just came in, and let's see here, grabbed him. Well, we had. Uh, yeah, he just. Got up there around it. And back-to-back uh, -back kickoff returns and back-to-back -back major penalties. So what's the situation going to be? They're marking first down. The question is whether it's first and 13. First down. It is a first down, but it's first down because of the play. So it'll be first down and 13. No, yeah, that's first down. No, they're going to make it first and 10. Yeah. There we go. They had the yard marker. I was watching him, and he finally moved in late. So this is kind of where we started at the 49, and it goes. <laughs> we, <laughs> we could have just done without all that. Did we get down? All right, see if Kirkshill can uh, have a little reprieve here from that major penalty. Inside a minute to go. 
And a nice running play up the middle. That's Chapman will take it inside the 45. And again, just good blocking at the point of attack. Well, it looks to me like Kirks was having more success going right at them than trying to run sideways. When they try to run sideways with just a little bit, uh, there's two inside linebackers running them down quickly. Second down and three. I don't know if they have to run another play. I don't think uh, they do. So that will end the very exciting first quarter that started out with two kickoff returns for touchdowns. After that, it was Kashokting on, on a long pass play. All the extra points were good, and that's where we are, 14-7. Just one in the books. We got a whole bunch coming up. Don't go anywhere. 14-7, Kashokting leads it here at Crooksville. Well, you can see our uh, fancy new graphic there put together by director Matt Mahalka. And you see 14 to seven. We just played that quarter, coach. We got one in the books. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. That'll make, that'll even be better after at halftime, I, I promise. So second down and three. Corksville players looking at the bench as they now look at their wrists to see the play. You just hope everybody looks in the same place on their wrists. Oh, coach. you bet. <laughs> and it'll be Chapman looking to get the first down, and I think it'll be just a little bit short. A little bit. That was a deep handoff, and I'll tell you, this Coshocton team, good team speed across the board. And you can you see know, here, they get to the ball. Yes, they do, but you know, you could have a, you could lose a game because the guy doesn't have his contact in. Right. You call those right. kind of plays. That's exactly right, to read that. You hope to use the right font. Right up the middle, first, first down. First down, that was a play that got him a big chunk on first down, and now it, has, it accomplishes a first down inside the 40 to the 39. And that's Chapman doing the heavy duty running right up the middle. Kirksville running game. I mean, it's working well. I mean, it's just straight ahead blocking, zone blocking, it looks like, man on man. No traps, no pulls. Just keep it simple. So the play coming in from the sidelines. Again, Kashokton just, there's, and there's not a safety there. I mean, no, there's a little there's extra coverage no. on the far side of the field, but nothing in the middle. And Chapman again, tough sledding, but he's getting positive yards. You just want, if you look at the passing game out of this coach, maybe it's just hard to say, maybe a slant or something, try to get behind those linebackers. Well, unless or something that, up the seam. Unless that deep referee back there is playing safety for a shock, and there's, there's no one else out there. I mean, center field is wide open. I mean, uh, you know, this is a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, this is a receiver's dream, one-on-one, -on -one, turn me loose. Safety's cheating over a little bit this time, not much. Second down seven, and they'll run the jet sweep. Yeah. But rodeo tackle back outside the 40 is dragged down was Tyler Rambo, great defense. Well, that's uh, Colin Shannon on the tackle. That's one where, <laughs> that's one when the fans say, you know, you're, you're making yardage at the middle, and so then you run wide and lose 10. Yep. And uh, that drives the fans crazy. So but it, but in, a coach's and mind, yeah, in a coach's mind, that play should be there every time because you really have them, you know, inside conscious. Right. So much for <laughs> so much for that. So they'll go three wide right, and Here Miller will roll that way. And he's got a receiver, and he'll have the first down. That's and called right. That was a well-designed play right there. You know, maybe it's the idea is get Miller out of the pocket, take that edge guy out of play. Well, the other thing it takes out of play is that inside linebacker is on a blitz. And that time it was uh, Cameron Johns. I mean, he one of their, you know, may be the best player on their team. He's blowing up the middle. Well, if you run to the outside, you know, you've wasted him. So yeah. uh, that's one of the, that's the, their best guy you don't have to deal with. Well, they've been good coming off the edge and then that blitz, that one guy up the middle. So if you just handle that guy on the edge, you're going That's to. Right. And that time Chapman That's blocked right. him. And they're angling in. They're not staying on the outside. Those guys on the perimeter. This that time. guy stayed outside that time. Look out. Miller, good presence. He'll be knocked down. Good defense. Hanging in there was Nathan Favre. We've called his name a few times tonight. But Miller, so composed. He's got a lot of people running at him with a full head of speed. Well, he feels the guy's coming from the backside and still gets this ball off. 
But boy, that's a tough throw to throw against your yeah. body like that. Well, and a little bit, we've talked about many times going back into the field of play. Well, you know, that's why I know when, well, Coach Williams, he's on the staff now, Greg Williams would, would tell our receivers, you know, don't run away from the quarterback, run to where he can get to. So he, right. you know, if that receiver had broken to the sideline, Miller may have been able to get the ball to him. It's just a much easier throw. And you can account for guys over there because they're in your That's field right. of vision. And you if know? he's covered, he can throw it out of bounds. There's the one on one. Yep, they've got a receiver oh. out there. And Brandon was going to try to make an Odell Beckham catch by just slowing and grabbing it with one hand, but it just got past him. You can see what he tries to do. He tries yep. to slow up. Looks like the old back shoulder throw. And then catch it with one yep. hand as he was on the sideline as well. He had no room to operate, that's for sure. The but there's that one-on-one -on -one on one match we've been talking yep. about. And you've got them all over the field in terms of one-on-one -on -one play. Third down and 10 for the ceramics. Miller rolls. Big rush. A little bit of time. Got a receiver there, but not able to hang on. So fourth down. Got a good kicker, but that's a... That's about a 42-yard field goal attempt. I'm going to think the Srams will probably go for this. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. And again, took a little long to develop. I, I think if you... So if I'm the Shockton defense, I'm going to just absolutely blow across the line of scrimmage on one end of the line and tell my other outside linebacker, take an arc contained course, make the quarterback stop, and your teammates will run over top of him. There it is. Here it comes. Nice job. Whoa. And again, throwing over the middle. He's got a receiver there, but he can't hang on. That was a big time hit. Big time. Braden Johns. And it was in and out of the hands of Colt White. But what a defensive play. Well, that, was a, that ball was on the money. Under pressure. Blitz coming from the outside. Ball was right there. Great play by That was Braden, Braden Johns. Johns. Yep. So turnover on downs at the 24-yard line. Because Shockton with the lead. Crooksville threatens, but four straight passes go awry. And up the middle it goes. That ball's on the ground. Came out. I think, yep, because Crooksville's got it. I've bounced around for a while there, Coach. I don't think I don't think the running back ever had it. I Let's think it was bubble here. from the start. And that ball's out, rolling around. There around. it is. There it goes again. Uh, whoop, there it not. is again. Looks like and number it was, seven it for Brandon. Brandon, Brandon got Brandon. on that. I mean, that thing looked like the uh, that little groundhog in that uh, golf movie. You know, <laughs> he just kept popping up, and we could catch him. I hear Kenny Loggins in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just like that, Crooksville get it, gets it back at just about the same place they just gave it up. Maybe a yard difference. Oh, here's the double, double reverse. reverse. Nice cut inside and gets it down to about the 20. Corbin Haley was out there. When his man, when the guy on his side took off around the perimeter, he never moved. You know, he I was going to say that. He just stayed right there. They played pretty good assignment football they on that Kashocton side. He just stayed right there. Second down and six for the ceramics, but they got it down just outside the 20. Yeah, four yard gain is a good play on first down, but when you do a trick play like that, you're hoping for a lot more than four yards. Yeah, you're hoping to hit a big one. Chapman up the middle. He's got some room. He's going to he may go. He is into the end zone. <laughs> Kashokton was looking on the edges, and Chapman took it right up the middle from 21 yards out, and we are a point away from having this game tied up. Well, you get the impression both head coaches have read each other's uh, biography. <laughs> Coach Woodham is throwing the ball for touchdowns, and, and Coach Valley is running it for touchdowns. So in to try to tie the ball game up is Zach McLean. Well, here it's one of the – okay, I, I was afraid Crooks was going to do their famous muddle huddle. Go try for to go two. for two. And I'm sure that the Shockton saw that on film from last week. McLean, and he's a good one. He kicks it through, and we are tied once again. 14 all here at Crooksville. We'll take a quick timeout. More second quarter action coming up. Crooksville turned it over on downs as they were trying to take it 
into the red zone. They get it right back on a fumble and able to get Chapman up the middle for 21 yards. And coach, that's been their most successful effort I so far. I tell you what, I love it. Fullback dive. That was about half of our playbook. They're going to go deep and keep it away from Braden Johns. It's Favre this time. Favre, pretty good speed too, but good coverage, and he'll bring it out to the 25. Good coverage that time. My sophomore, Ethan Sprinkle, number two on that tackle. Yeah, he fought off an outside yes, he block. he did. Outstanding effort by the young sophomore. Comes from good stock. You, you, there's another family you know, yeah, huh? I had, uh, had his <laughs> older brother. There you go. I'm trying to think if there's someone in this part of the world that you don't know. There's got to be a couple. I'm going to find them at halftime. Look out. Look Jeff out. Sweet. Oh. And Miller, oh, what a nice great job. job. He got stiff on by Boy, he did. a little lower center of gravity player, and he stayed right with it I mean, and that, a big loss. That was a maximum stiff arm. Oh, man, in the NFL, that would have been, you know, illegal, illegal hands to the face and one of the other, you know, contact penalties the NFL calls these days. But, man, that was a great job by Miller. Well, he didn't, he didn't fold. I mean, no, he stayed he right with it. He took, a, he took a right jab right in the face and just kept on coming. So loss on the play of four. Again, Miller, a quarterback on the other side, but showed his athleticism there. And right up the middle, and got back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe another yard for Cameron Johns. And again, that's a, you'll take that play every time. Every Coach. time. Every time. Third and nine. I mean, this is, uh, Kirksville couldn't rate the script any better than this. The last two series that Kishokton's had the ball, they've had a third and eight and a third and nine. Right now, they, they got to cover one guy. Somebody uh, on this play action pass, maybe even a drop back. Last time it was a drop back pass. They got to cover one guy. Look for this quick, quick screen right here to the right. Nope. How almost a high snap that time. Again. They're going for all of it here. Down the seam. Great Brandon coverage. coverage, and he'll intercept it. Well, if you want to tell young players to get your head turned around, this is exactly what he oh, did. This outstanding. He became the receiver. Outstanding bank. Brady Brandon. Look at this coverage. I mean, it wasn't a bad right throw. There. Perfect position. Uh, you could argue he ran the best pattern. Yeah, he did. And, you know, really, Favre there, the intended receiver, needed to play defensive back, try to knock it down. Yes, he did. But Brandon a little bit stronger, and he made the play. Two turnovers for Kashokton in their last two possessions. Of course, he ran the second kickoff. It wasn't the opening kickoff. It was the next kickoff in for the touchdown. Did Brady Brandon. So he's had a good night so far. Play action, little bubble screen out here. If he can get away, and he just is tripped up. They're trying to get some players isolated in space right now. Yes, they are, because they know that if they get one, if they get a receiver past the initial tackler, this could be a big play. So he makes one man miss, maybe just a little slow getting to the next block, but they'll fix that up. So second down and six. Right up the middle again to Chapman and hanging onto his leg on the ground was Hayden Shook. We've called his name a couple times, Coach. He's a tough defensive player. And they'll unpile slowly. It's a favorable spot for Kirksville. So a couple of yards, they'll make it third and four. You know, I love the passion here, Coach, in the stands, but I didn't realize they had so many assistant coaches sitting in front of the box. <laughs> That's Kirkshill tradition. Well, you know, I love it, though. you got to love that passion. The good, best thing about it is I didn't have to pay those guys. When yeah. I was <laughs> Third and four, Chapman, and he bolts through. He's got another big play for a first down. Nice blocking up front by the Ceramics. I mean, they're dominating the defensive line right now and getting up on those linebackers as well. Well, you know, with this success running it there, that will open some things up on the edge a little bit eventually. First down and going to fake. Miller going to look. He's going to look to throw. He's got a receiver, Brandon, and he'll spin out of the first tackle and get about six yards on the play, maybe five. Let's see where they'd spot it. Well, Kashokton's playing man-to-man -man defense. I don't think I've seen him in his zone one time tonight. They're playing strictly man. I mean, that's, that's the simplest thing for your kids to, to, to learn. You, know, you got him, you got him, and you got him, and that way they can turn loose their blitzers. But this wide receiver better look at, he's about four yards off. Yeah, no, he was, that's almost a penalty. <laughs> but he able to see as that was 
Uh, that was Thomas Russell. And off up the middle again, and another first down. Well, they're definitely having more success attacking the middle of that Kashaka defense than going around the end. Yep. Uh, I know Hayden Shooks on, on one, one end. Who's this 56? Colin Shannon. I mean, they're, they're shutting things down. Over on the other side is 13, Garrett Rice. And that, that middle stuff is, is wide open. And Miller going to fake it this time and keep it. And he's got plenty of room out there. First down and a lot more. Gets it inside the 20-yard line. You know, he's he's that rare quarterback that uh, when you go to tackle him, he's putting the shoulder down. He's going to try to run over you. Yeah, we said he's. Oh, uh, look out. Uh, we got a hold against Crooksville. Can call yeah, on that far side of the field. I mean, that ball is down about the 15-yard line. That's, that's going to really hurt. In a spot foul, it'll be first down, but it's going to be a little bit extra. Well, let's see. The, actually, because it was a spot foul, they're going to mark it back, but it'll be first down and nine. First and nine. And Miller going to fake. He's got a player. Oh, there it is. Russell. And we saw him score a touchdown last week. And he will have a first down inside the 25. Well, I know his family as well. Good stock. <laughs> you know, I think your definition of good stock, if there's more than one football player in the family, that counts, right? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Duh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we're going to get a timeout call. Now we're going to start the clock. Referee making some big motions there to get clock started. Nice move that time by Russell to make that play even Boy, better. He, Look at this. And Chapman not back and there. That's not Chapman. That's now it's Tyler, Tyler Carr. Carr and wow. They found some matchups they like in the middle of the field, Coach. That offensive line up there right at the middle. 58. Andrew Peterson. 70. Thane Childress. Second down and very short. Miller going to hang on to it again. Look out. Look Trying out. Trying to get the edge. Did he get to the pylon? Waiting. Nope. Going to be stopped short, but not far to go. It'll be first down and goal to go. Looks like they might market it around the two. So you can see here, just a great move to the inside. Makes another man miss. And just good defense yep. coming all the way across the field was Braden Johns. But a first and goal for the Ceramics, trying to take the lead for the first time tonight. Miller, a throw. Well, I'll tell you, that's dangerous. Wow. Threw it a little bit behind him. And I'll tell you, Braden Johns is capable of picking that off. Let's see here how close well, it you was. Know, you're, to you're rolling right and, and running a slant back to the inside. Yeah, it's, that's tough. That's one of those plays, if it works, uh, as a coach, boy, you look like a genius. <laughs> right. <laughs> it doesn't work. Everybody's going to say, well, not so smart, coach. We well, you know that's a, we used to call that the quarterback's dad's play because you want to be able to get your <laughs> stats on the board for your son. Timeout, and we're going to get a timeout. Crooksville will be call. second and goal. Coming up, we're inside three minutes to play here at Crooksville as the Ceramics try to take the first lead for them tonight. Back at Village Park here in Crooksville, Ohio, one of the two grass fields left in the Muskinga Valley League. Though this is a non-conference game tonight. Second down and goal. Chapman back in there, and he'll get his second touchdown of the night. Right? You bet. You want to mention some of those offensive linemen? I'll tell you coach. what, it's uh, Pitcock, Wisson, Peterson, Childress, and Maralt. Sounds like a law firm. And they are definitely controlling the line of scrimmage. Great job tonight with those five guys. So Chapman took it in 21 yards the first time, two yards this time, and puts Crooksville into the lead, their first lead of the night. McLean in to do the kicking. Great snap, great hold, great kick. And just like that, it's 21-14. We'll step out again. Hey, there's still plenty of time in this, sec in this first half, <laughs> this second quarter for scoring. Don't go anywhere. Crooksville to kick it off. 
now with the lead, 21-14. Again, they're keeping it away from old number three out there. Look out. But Favre is going to be tripped up. Good tackle by Austin Love, just a sophomore. Favre, good speed as well, but they certainly didn't want Braden Johns to get him, who's on the far side of the field over there. You don't really have a good choice back there. No. I mean, you have one really bad choice, that's yeah. for sure. But you, you can see Favre fighting his way through there. And, wow, good thing that Love was able to grab an ankle. Well, if you're in a kickoff team, you have to take it personally as your personal responsibility to make the tackle. You can't wait for your teammate to make the tackle. That's when you end up uh, watching the guy run into the end zone. Here's Johns will get it sweep. on the jet sweep. We'll have to cut it up. But I'll tell you, he gets to full gear in a pretty, pretty big hurry. But yes, a good tackle. That was Braden Johns coming off the wing. And Cavani, I think, is he the guy that able to trip him up, gain of uh, a short four. Well, I'm sure that's what the coaching staff at Coshocton is telling their kids, you know, calm down, settle down. Uh, let's get back in our game plan here. Where we get the power T formation. And the receiver wide open but can't hang on. Boy, that, that is the that is the curse of the wing T offense if you're on defense because you get so wrapped up in stopping the jet sweep and the off tackle lead in the fullback trap and all of a sudden somebody's down the field all by themselves. Well, and that was Shook again. He's the guy that scored on the 72-yard touchdown. So he can score and go. By the way, he has great speed. If he'd have caught that, if he'd have brought that one down, it would have been uh, another touchdown. You bet. Yeah. Because I thought, I thought when he caught the one in the first quarter that somebody would get on him pretty quick. When you have that tight end, I, I have one of those in my family. <laughs> he wouldn't have had that gear. So third down play here. Go back in to the more normal wing T formation. And pressure put on in the tackle. In fact, it will be a sack. Loss of a few yards on that. I think it was Chris Pitcock. And here you see it develop. And or no, was that that's 15. Yeah, that's Tyler Carr. It's Tyler Carr. Did a good job not giving outside there. Yes, he did. So timeout call. We'll keep it here this time. Some big games coming up. Next week, though, I don't know that we'll have any bigger, Coach, as we will go back to the friendly confines at Sheridan. And the uh, Tri-Valley Scotties apparently are coming to town. I don't know. People are saying it might be a big game. It might be a big game. Although Tri-Valley has two losses already on the season. That, that's, When's the last time that happened? While. Yeah. And uh, the word on the street is their quarterback, uh, Fritter, yeah. is out with a foot injury. Oh, Aiden Fritter, yep. Well, that'll be interesting to see. It. They'll adjust. I mean, that's a tremendous coaching staff, and they've got some uh, some good depth on that team. and. You know what? You, those two teams strap it up. It's going to be good no matter what. Well, you're exactly right about the coaching staff for both squads. They're both outstanding. Right. They get the most out of their players year in, year out, and, and uh, that should be uh, a good matchup. Just like tonight's game, good matchup. Uh, this has been great. We had a good matchup last week. Oh, uh, teams we that were looking for their first win. Okay. That's what you like about high school football. Look, watch for the fake here, boys. So it is the quarterback back there for Coshocton, Gavin Williams. And they'll put a play there it is. out here. They're going to throw it down the sideline. Did he get it? He did not, but do we get a penalty flag? A pass interference. I think gonna it is going to be pass interference. And Let's, we're just checking to see what the call is going to be, and it is going to be pass interference. And the mark off will be a first down for Chris. And the question was whether the defender on the far side got his head turned back around. We've seen that so many times. So, do we have it? Okay. No, that's a. Yes, I think that's a play, play. before. Yep. So it is a first and ten for. To Shockton Redskins. You know, you're, you're playing a team whose record is one and four. They're not worried about uh, the fake punt going awry and ruining the season. I mean, you know, you have to be really be aware of all those kind of things. Hand Look out. Handoff on the trap up the middle. 
Cameron Johns, and he chews up pretty good chunk on first down. Well, this is, if they're going for it on the uh, fake punt, and I have to believe this is four down territory from here on out. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is where they, they make their, their money here. I mean, four down territory, the running game they have. This is their best field position uh, of the night. I mean, they, they haven't <laughs> had the courtesy to take advantage of the field position because they just run down the field to score. Coshocton with a couple of timeouts as we get close to the minute mark here. And the look to throw complete. And hauling it in was Co Kobe Rust. We'll get to him on our all name team. The, uh, if you're a receiver for Kishaka, but you better take advantage of every every chance you get because there's not going to be you're a lot. You're not going to have a lot thrown your way. Not going to be a lot of throws with the yep. with the Cameron and Braden show uh, running out there. Well, and you know the thing with those guys, usually when you when you first day of practice, they ask you if you can block. <laughs> That's right. Williams to throw, and I don't think he was in bounds. He was not. Might have waited just an extra count to throw that one. Good coverage at time. Good contained by the defensive end or outside linebacker, probably for the ceramics. But nobody in, nobody in Gavin Williams' face, that's for sure. Good coverage out there by Caden Miller. So it makes it second down. It, it's and ten. You know, when, when you've worked all week and you've heard your coach say we had to stop this run inside, had to stop the jet sweep. That makes it pretty tough for your pass rush because your defensive linemen just aren't thinking pass rush. They're thinking stay home and play that trap stone, play that lead, watch the jet sweep. Three wide to the right, one to the left, setting up that middle screen and just forgot to tuck it and go, kind of looking that, where he was going to go. That play, when it, when it hit the high school uh, field a few years back, Man, that was almost unstoppable. I think yep. Tri Valley ran that as well as anybody I ever saw. You know, and uh, I was doing some work in the Columbus area, and Granville was another team that just seemed to run oh, that play all the time. Teams made a living on that thing. There's nothing in your secondary rotation that covers uh, something that runs like that. Third down now in 10. Straight drop back. Big some pass rush. being put on. Hit as he throws, and I didn't really there's, see anybody out there. There's nobody over there. Great backside pressure from Tyler Carr. They're going to they're going to discuss this if it's illegal, intentional grounding because there's no receiver over there. Nope, they're going to say no. I'm just not sure. Well, it must be outside the pocket rule because mm -hmm. there was <laughs> the only guy in a white shirt. There was Jamie Brandon, yeah. and he's the coach for Kirksville. Yep. Okay, fourth down. So fourth down and 10. This won't be disguised as a punt. Nope. I got to believe number two is going to be involved in this somehow. That's Cameron Johns. He moves out to the right. He's going to look for a pass in the middle. Said they go to the middle screen and off to the races. He'll be into the end zone. Couldn't make the tackle. Looked like they were going to throw the little flare out to Cameron Johns, instead they go to Braden Johns. Well disguised, well disguised. In the middle, and he just does all the rest. He's got a good player in Miller chasing him, but he can't make the tackle, and then he gets by the tackle of Tyler Rambo and works his way into the end zone. So that's from 35 yards out. Well, that time they let him go a little further across the formation before they threw the ball to him. And I d definitely think the, uh, with his brother right here on, on the flare, that definitely took the defense's attention away from the middle. The kick is up and through. And we are tied now at 21. We'll take a quick time out. There's still plenty of time with 36.4 <laughs> seconds. Who knows what will happen? Join us after this break. Welcome back to the WHIZ TV Game of the Week, brought to you by Century National Bank. Kevin Rowe and the coach, Doug Clifford. Braden Johns gets into the end zone for the second time tonight. The first was on a 98-yard kickoff return. And this kick, Crooksville able to get on it quickly and put themselves in pretty good field position. Yeah. Let's see if they try to it make up some room yeah. as they skip that one through. and. 
getting some yardage, Tyler Rambo. Looks like Kirksma has one timeout left here in the half. And a good kicker, by the way. And a good kicker. Yes, they do. So they do not have to score a touchdown here to get the lead back before going into the locker room. Zach McLean just waiting his opportunity. Yes, he is. So first and 10. Miller, a couple of fakes, looks to throw. He's oh, got a receiver a on the back side. Oh, nice call. Braden Brand, if he can make a play or miss, he's get got room, and he does. Uh, not able to get out of bounds. The clock will stop for a moment as they move the chains. You got to hurry, fellas. Okay, they're going to spike it on this down. And so they'll quickly get it set up. Miller, get set, see if he goes set, under center. Set. Clock begins running, and he'll put it on the ground, and the clock will stop. First and 10 at the 38. So, Brandon, good job out here. I think he thought he might have got a little bit of a face mask tug as he was talking to the official after the play. Well, with one timeout left and a good good kicker. I mean, you can throw this ball anywhere. Yeah, that's right. You get in the middle of the field. It, that's right. You can, you can exploit the middle of the field. You know, you're not limited here. But right now, the safeties are definitely walked back. Tyler Carr is in the backfield with Miller. Now, Kashockton will call the timeout. We'll keep it here this time as we get ready to, this, well, as this first half winds down, 17.8 seconds. So you got a couple of plays you can run, maybe to get yourself positioned. Maybe take one shot in the end zone, try to beat somebody in the one-on-one. Well, you know, there's always that. But I think, you know, based on where my kicker can make one from, Yep. That's where I'd be shooting for on this Well, play. he clearly can make it from the 40, and I think he can move out to the 45, and you can feel like he's got a good shot. So to do that, you're going to have to get to about the 28-yard line, which is maybe 10 yards. Right. So I think you're in pretty good shape at 10 yards. And right now, the way the defense was set up that time, uh, Braden Johns and Gavin Williams, two pretty good athletes, are standing back there now uh, and almost like the old uh, Tampa 2 defense, you know, two safeties in the middle of the field, the corners walked up. So they're, you know, they're kind of uh, aware that they're a little vulnerable there in the middle if, if they have, you know, keep playing the way they have been. So now they're playing zone, keeping everything in front of them, make that tackle, and, and uh, don't let Kirksville have a, have a touchdown here. If they want to try a field goal, well, well, you know, they'll deal with that when it happens. But right now they don't want to give up that big play down the field. Beautiful night here in Crooksville. It feels like as the weather has finally become fall-like here. Great camera work tonight. John Cox, Tim Cox, Tom Hatfield on the cameras tonight. Throw is complete, and that's well within the range. Let's see if they go ahead and we're going to get the timeout call because of the chain move, and now Crooksville will take the timeout. Again, we'll keep it here. We don't want to miss. I don't know. You take a chance, Coach, here then to throw one into the end zone or let's see how much time 9.5 do you take one if shot if I'm going to throw one it's going to be in the end zone yeah and, I'm and sure only where your guy can catch it that's right now, I don't yeah. think but there's I don't think they called time yeah they have no did Crooksville they, then call yeah, the they timeout, timeout. No. well Crooksville came back uh, out and lined up yes they did Kashokton still has a timeout. I don't think they, well, let's, we'll keep it here. We want to sort this out. Well, Coach Val is really upset here. Uh, his timeout's burned, and his team. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if then Kashokton called theirs. Finally, they're just making Crooksville take that timeout because they called it. Question was, you could get up and spike it. You're going to lose a couple of seconds there. So you're at seven. Now you're kind of, you, st you might still have the timeout. If you get up and spike it, you're going to probably have one play. Right. Because, you know, the last time they got up and spiked it, the clock ran four seconds. When they marked the ball ready for play, and by the time the ball was snapped and yeah. spiked, and the clock stopped, it went from 21 to 17 seconds. So uh, that's cutting it down from nine to Getting five. A and I, I just close. Don't, yeah. So I, I think they have. One quick play here. They can't take a sack, and, and Miller has to get rid of this ball in a hurry or run it in himself. Four wide receivers to the near side. Throw it. He's going to throw it into the end zone. Touchdown. He in. Touchdown. That's what we said they should do. 
Woo! That's Ethan Sprinkle. Ethan Sprinkle. You throw the ball to a sophomore on a <laughs> the last play of the half. Are you kidding me? Just like we drew it up tonight, Coach. <laughs> oh, I taught that boy well. Still 4.1 <laughs> seconds on the clock, so we're not done. No, it's enough time for at least two runbacks <laughs> on a kickoff. We're all good. So from 20 yards out, it goes from Miller to Sprankle. And we knew we'd have an exciting one. It has not disappointed. Kirksville with the kick is now up 28-21. We'll take another timeout as we get ready for the kickoff. Folks, don't go anywhere <laughs> don't, because you do not want to miss it. Don't go for the popcorn now. Well, there you see what's left in the half, 4.1 seconds. The Crooksville Ceramics take the lead with the pass from Miller to Sprankle. If there's a 60 number out there, that's who I'd kick the ball to. I wouldn't kick the ball to any of those guys <laughs> those little numbers, man. Oh, man. This has been the most exciting part of the game tonight. And it is a little Look squibber out. up the middle. And it'll be a f number 15. That's decent, although he's going east and west, so you got to thank him for that. That's the half. And that will run out the half. Kevin, I, I coached here for 21 years. I don't ever remember a game where the halftime score was 28 to 21. Yeah, that would that would get some coaches fired at the half. <laughs> oh man, much different day in the ceramics in front of their hometown squad score late, early, and late in this one, and we will take a break. 28-21, Crooksville on top over Coshocton here at Village Park. Welcome back to the WHIZ TV game of the week brought to you by Century National Bank. Kevin Round, the coach Doug Clifford in Crooksville at Village Park. Ceramics took the lead again late in the first half, 28-21. They lead there, you see, by the quarter. Scored 21 points in that second quarter and lead it by a touchdown. And they get the kick to start this half. Well, this is a chance to open up a, a two-score lead. Brandon, oh, look at that opening. He returned one in the first half for a touchdown. He's got good yardage out over the 45. Fumble, but I think it was out of bounds. So Crooksville will hang on. I'll tell you, Brandon's one of those guys, he throws his body around on the football field just a little bit, Coach. I mean, there's, there's not much of it there, uh, but what, <laughs> what there is, he does throw it. There he saw the sidelines for the home team, the Crooksville Ceramics, coached by Casey Valley. And Crooksville will get it. Boy, you, I tell you, a team in this game might go up by two scores if they could. We have not had that yet. No, we're not. And the play action. So run pass option play. And sniffing it out was Coshocton. And on the play, a loss of three. Not much room there when you run it to the closed side. That was Colt White on the reception. And you're right, that's a read there, Coach. Maybe Miller next time will tuck that ball. Well, they fake the dive. Come off of that, Miller takes a look and, and see uh, see what looks favorable to him. And and that time he he decided to throw it, and his receiver just had no operating room at all. They run it to the other side and trying to get it out to Brandon and just a little bit behind him out there in the flat. Yep. He's open. I mean, he was wide open. It would have been a uh, a nice game. He probably would have had some yards after the catch. Caden Miller, a live arm for sure. The trouble with that is if you make, if you get a little bit behind or a little bit ahead, he's throwing it so hard, it's hard to make that extra catch. In fact, the one that Sprankle caught oh. at the end of the first half was a bullet that he framed up beautifully. Yeah, if he hadn't caught it, it probably would have knocked a hole in one of those signs down there <laughs> in the field. Would have, for sure. So setting up in the pistol. In motion is Rambo. Going deep, he's got a receiver out there, and Brandon, and he got made it. a catch. And he had a player right up on him, Nathan Favre. But Brandon, who just wanted it a little bit more, and Favre just a little late to the game. With the ball, Favre's in perfect position, but the ball is just underthrown, and he can't make the adjustment because he, you know, he's got his eye on the receiver. If you're playing man to man, you, you know, that, that's it. Your eyes are on the receiver the whole time. Well, uh, we talk like about it. Zone. Talk about it all the time when you don't get your head turned around. The receiver a distinct advantage. Here's Chapman, and he is just going to run wild in the middle of the field. I mean, he he didn't even come close to a defender until he got tackled. 
And let's see if he stays hobbling just a little bit coming up off the ground, but can you see just great blocking at the point of attack? That's when you're, you're the head coach and you remind him, you know, you're a fullback and you don't get hurt. No, you're not allowed. <laughs> Those aren't injuries. <laughs> and in fact, they'll give it right back to him and he'll get good yardage off the right side this time. Well, that time he, that, that was designed to go right in the middle. He saw a crease open over, over the right tackle. And you know, that offensive line for Crooksville, you know, we recognized him before. Chris Pitcock, Branson Wesson, Andrew Peterson, Thane Childress, and P.J. Moral. I mean, they are absolutely dominating the line of scrimmage in this running game. And again, Chapman a little nicked up. He'll get the fake. Miller, good move to get himself some space. Lofts it up. He's got a receiver. Did he get it? No, not able to hang on. So he was trying to get it out to Rambo, but Rambo. Miller did a good job just to avoid the sack and then gave his player a chance. Let's you know, watch if, it here. If Cade Miller was a cat, that would have been about seven lives right there. <laughs> I mean. And he gets in the right place, oh, but. Put it in his hands. Can't not bad miss. defense by Garrett Rice to kind of stay with it out there. Tyler Rambo just couldn't come down with it. So third down now and six. Big play here. Rambo in motion. The fake, the look to throw, one to throw it back. Splits the defenders, he's gonna find his way. Oh, the way he's to the, the end zone. zone. Miller just absolutely <laughs> shows why again his coach calls him one of the top athletes in the entire league. What a, what a read on his part. Big rush is on, they're not going for the run fake at all. He took one look at that and said, that's it. That's that's man-to-man -man coverage for you. When you're in man-to-man, -man, the quarterback can run like that. I remember the, the kid for Tri-Valley years and years ago when they put the spread in. People try to play man against him, and, and you just just giving the quarterback a license to steal. We're going to oh. get a block first time that has happened tonight. So the score will stay at 34 to 21. But Crooksville takes the opening kickoff of this second half and drives it right down the field with Miller, taking it in for the touchdown at the end of the drive. We'll take a quick break again. Ceramics up at home by 13. So Crooksville takes their opening drive all the way to the end zone and now lead it by a couple of touchdowns. McLean to kick it off. And well, that's a pooch it short. It's still bouncing. And jumping on it is Garrett Rice for the Coshocton Redskins, but they about to start their first drive of this second half. How was that pizza at halftime? You know, um, so here's the deal, Coach. I don't really like to thank you all that much. I'll leave that for the end of the season for a big thank you. Yeah, that, that, yeah but, the obligatory but thank you. Yeah, you know, kind of yeah. in passing, yeah. whatever. But I got to give it to you this time. You had a former player come up. Brandon Fresh. Brought us three incredibly good pizzas, yes, and I'm were. not making that up. B&B &B snack bar. So I don't know. You must have been nice to him as a coach. In a handoff again, they're running the more traditional T formation back there. Brandon played left tackle for us, and he was the absolute – Prototype left tackle. Nothing nothing bad happened from the backside when he played. Well, just a just a gem of a guy. Yes, he is. And was nice enough to bring those up for us. And you could tell it meant a lot to him to be able to bring those to you. <laughs> so well, and then we just get to kind of ride your coattails, which is just <laughs> fine, by the way. He's a good man. Short gain, make it second in a long seven. And oh, good nice defense play. right at the point of attack. As that is P.J. Moralt. P.J. Moralt, you bet. Two-way player, one of those offensive linemen has done so, such a great job tonight. Man, he absolutely says not here. And then helping him seal the deal was Chris Pitcock. Another offensive lineman. But, yeah, they uh, – Two-way players. That was an excellent effort. So third down and long. Again, not a place where this Coshocton running attack wants to be. Okay, this is where the, the Kirksville defense uh, in a similar situation got burned on that flanker screen across the middle uh, there at the end of the first half for a touchdown. Yeah, they ran and a little kind of misdirection. Because Shockton has it set up again, uh, the same formation. See if they throw the flare pass to the brother this time. Now they're going to leave him in the block, throw. look over the middle. has got a receiver, but then oh. good defense to strip it away. It was. That's Brandon there to hit it hard. And Outstanding play. Out of the hands of Isaac Shook. 
Good protection by the Coshocton offensive line. Great strip right there. Man, we saw a strip come into play at the uh, John Glenn Philo game. At the very last the very possession the of Philo, Glenn yeah. Stripped the Philo receiver and saved the game uh, a couple weeks ago. And that's a trait to just watch, see where the receiver's hands are, and then work your way through them. Try to get up in between them. And they put a player in motion on the punt. Yes, they do. Look out, look out. That's Gotta a, make sure that's a short clear. One. Good bounce for Kashakta. Usually the team has a word they yell to everybody to get everybody to get out of the way. So good field position for the Ceramics. Here at home leading now by a couple of scores. So we also want to thank some other folks that um, help us get things done. Uh, Isaac Dreyer down there has done a lot of the graphic works. He's our replay guy tonight. He's done, you know, the truck is talking back now, and that really is unnecessary. We, <laughs> we want to give Isaac a little bit of credit. Jeremiah McKenzie up with us in the booth keeping track of the scoreboard. Can't we all just get along? And he's, he's like the, uh, the tech guru that gets everything oh, working. Nice cut. That's Chapman on the far side of the field. Still going. And... You know, he, he. we mentioned the last drive, he looked like he might have just got dented up a little bit. He didn't come out at all. Well, watch this cut he makes. I mean, I'm sure the Kashaka staff's telling these guys, you got to stop this stuff up the middle. And he bends that all the way to the outside, outruns Garrett Rice on the perimeter to make yeah, that Rice game. had contained and didn't. And that's what we always talk about, a coach keeping their outside arm available. It was tucked in his pocket. <laughs> Chapman now right up the middle, and again, just ahead of steam. Wow. Big chunk on first down. Well, that was a, uh, that's what we used to call in the business by number 75, your basic pancake block. Yes, sir. Wow. That looked like Lane Kenny that time. Uh, I'm not sure if that was him or 72 or 75, but somebody plowed one of the Coshocton Redskins. Second down and six. Chapman hey, look at that again. hole. Boom. And at that time, Chapman just kind of waited for the hole to develop. Found it, and now he's just. It is Lane Kenny in there now at 75. And look at the hole there. My goodness. And there. There's some guys taking pride in what they're doing. Oh, you bet. That used to tell our offensive lineman, if, the, if you're uh, the guy you're blocking, the back of his shirt's dirty, you're doing your job. <laughs> And that was just a good push down the field. They blitz this time, but whiff on the blitz. Trying to get in there from the center part of the field. Well, their defense is packed in tight. Their, their defensive linemen are in there tight. Their outside linebackers are walked up on the line. Inside linebackers are blitzing. And right now, none of that is really all that effective. The offensive line is just, <laughs> they're knocking people out of the way. Yes, they are. And there's a, it's 25. We don't have him on the roster. But he came flying through and just play went the other way. Uh, and we have motion that's going to be one. motion, yeah. They're actually going to stop it. Yep. Tyler Carr might have just been moving a lower. You know, if you do that, then just split out. The problem was he was going to be getting the ball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You don't want to do that to your quarterback no. either. No. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of the lookout block. That would have been the lookout handoff. Yeah. That's when where Miller would have turned and goes, Tyler was supposed to be here. <laughs> He's out there. So instead, he kind of hung with it but got caught. Three or four new players come in the game. It's a little different setup for the offense, more of a passing formation. And they're still going to run it. And Carr right up the middle. Chapman gets a little bit of a rest. He's worked hard to move this drive forward. We'll see how quickly Chapman gets back out there. But That's a nice call on second down. I mean, you know, this is – Four down territory if they want, but it's just right up the heart of the defense. But again, the linemen for Crooksville creating some real opportunities. So I always, I've always believed that's the most disheartening thing for defense, uh, short of giving up big fluke plays, is just that grind between the guards and grind between the tackles, and just you're just getting your butt kicked up the middle, and that, that's that's tough to take. That's demoralizing. Chapman. And, it, and it hurts. <laughs> yeah, it, that, most of all. Chapman back in behind the quarterback. He's going to get it, put his head down. And I don't think he got the first down, but this may be four down territory. It's going to be about a yard and a half short. Well, I know the uh, the defenders for Shockton are increasingly getting up slower and slower. I know that. 
Well, they're kind of trying to grab rather than hit now. It was a nice job blocking Cameron Johns that time. He's one of their better players on his team, both sides of the ball, and he was blocked out of that play. So fourth and a yard. Here come the linebackers. And they're just going to push the formation forward. And that says a lot about what you think about your offensive line when you just say, folks, here's what we're going to do. Yep. There is no secret. As you watch here, the way this formation was set up. I mean, it's just everybody steps to the inside and blocks. It's just a wedge uh, up the middle. Wedge blocking. And Millard sacrifices his body at the quarterback spot to get that first down on the sneak. Well, that's an apt description. Cade Miller absolutely has, uh, he has no regard for his, the defender's bodies and even less for his own. I think that's exactly right. And handoff will go to Chapman. But you see now, even when the play is not, you know, big chunks, it is still falling forward. Yes, it, he is. And look, look at the Shockton Redskins. I mean, they're just every play, one of their players is uh, just barely able to get up off the ground. I mean, that's, and I think that's what won the game for Kirksville last week was their conditioning. I think they were in better shape than the Morgan Raiders, and in the last part of the game it really showed. And right now, uh, well, they're, they're putting a beating on the Shockton interior five or seven there on the defense. Only a couple of yards on that, but that was the fall forward for Chapman. Fake to Chapman, quick throw out to Rambo. And he'll, he'll outrun the blockers a little bit. But a good gain, it'll be make it third and short. But you can see, he's got blockers out in front. And you know, you just never know the right call net because sometimes you want to sneak up behind them, but then again, <laughs> maybe you just want to go get the yards you can get. Well, the, the running game has absolutely killed the pass rush. Unless it's a you know obvious passing down, the Coshocton defense has to sit tight. Chapman on third down is going to wow. get the first down easily. So right now, if you guess pass for Coshocton, Kirks is going to run it right at you, where you, you have an extra man out there and, and backed off to play pass carriage. If you you jack up the middle and put an extra man on the line, they throw it to the outside. So right now, Coach Valley's play calling has these guys really off balance. First down and goal inside the 10-yard line. Miller going to hang on. Look and out. He's going to he score. He will cut back, and that's easy. He read his block out in front beautifully. Brandon out there along with Russell for the block. We watch it again. And again, Chapman, everybody goes for that. Miller outruns the edge. Brandon, a good block out in front. Good block by Colt White. And so everybody doing their job. And back into the end zone from nine yards out go the Crooksville Ceramics. Well, we're going to have to grade Coach Valley down on that drive. That was extremely methodical. It, it, it it was was nothing, and he doesn't like to be called that. Nothing he wants, uh, you know, in the pregame he told us it was going to be anything but methodical tonight. So I'm going to say, Coach Valley, okay, you get six, but that was methodical. You're, you're back to they're going to go for two after the blocked extra point. Last time, Miller trying to he's outrun the defense. Here. And he's grabbed by the arm, gets away. Tries to throw it, but he'll end up having to hold on to it. I'll tell you, that was shades of Fran Tarkenton for all of you <laughs> that remember Fran Tarkenton from the day. I don't know who to compare him to today, but he was just trying to find anything he could. And oh, I think really? I mean, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, and those guys are like uh, trying to like sack the quarterback if he has nah, a motorcycle. Know, Russell Wilson probably is closest to it. But Tarkenton would extend those plays forever. <laughs> and so we'll keep it here. It's... Kirksville gets ready to kick off. Now leading it 40 to 21. Well, you know what they say, Kevin, in the NFL. There's good running quarterbacks and there's good old quarterbacks. Yeah. <laughs> there's no good old running quarterbacks. Well, and that's what, you know, I, I've just been talking to people. You just don't realize how hard you're hit every oh. single play in the NFL. They used to do some comparisons. Take, take your hardest hit in high school, and that's your hardest hit. You know, double it, it's yeah. college. Take your hardest hit in college, double it, and make it every play Man. in the NFL. So, something Can't like that. Can't imagine. Can't imagine. All right, here we go. 40 to 21. Another kickoff. Let's see if they can kick it away here. from number three. Yep, the little pooch this time. But taking it on the short, working his way behind his blocker. I think that's Favre back there. Nice coverage that time by the ceramics. No gaping lane in the middle of that kickoff return like earlier in the game. You know, talking to Coach Valley before he said that Coshocton 
on their kickoff returns just kind of runs it between the hashes and just puts a bunch of bodies in between there. So you know if you're one of those first guys on the kickoff coverage, you're going to have to run right into that. Uh, that's a WB, hmm? wedge buster. You, thank you. I'm glad I didn't have enough speed to ever be that guy. <laughs> that just, guy can run a little bit. First and 10 for the Redskins. In motion is Braden Johns, and he's going to get it, cuts it back up, and good gain on first down. But they, they, they had a, a chance perhaps to dominate the game, Braden and his, and his brother Cameron, but Kirksville's defense just schemed it up right, and they've really kind of shut that down. Well, no, we, I talked to Coach Brandon before the game, and uh, – their number one priority was to stop the fullback trap and a jet sweep. Those two plays. And up the middle it goes, and there will be a first down as Cameron Johns that time. We thought we'd see a little bit more of that, but now down by 19 kind of changes the approach. Well, you know, there's still uh, a little over two minutes here in the third quarter. So I just don't think the Kirksville defense can uh, go soft here and, and – give up a touchdown drive in the third quarter. I don't think they want to have to have a nail biter at the end of the game. No, sir. There's a great, oh! And got out of a tackle and tell you what, he, all of this is on him now. As Braden Johns evades the tackle and able to get something where it looked like it might be a loss. I think that's Braden Cavaney uh, that nearly made a tackle for a loss here, but uh, man, that's a quality back he was going after. Well, and he just got a little bit, lost a little leverage going to his outside yep. shoulder. Yep. Still just a five-yard game, but it looked like it might have been a big play for the defense there. But the clock running, minute and a half to go in this third quarter, and Crooksville may be content with a long, sustained drive. You just don't want to give them something easy. And up the middle it goes again in a first down, so the clock will stop for the moment. Or at least it's close. Let's see. They haven't yeah, called they, it yet. Now they yeah. do. First down. So a couple of five-yard plays for Coshocton gets them a first down. Well, now inside Crooksville territory. You know, those five-yard gains with, with the ability that the Johns family brings to the game. Yes, sir. Uh, that that five-yard gain could be a 48-yard a gain in a heartbeat. Well, that's, a, again, from a defensive standpoint, you want to be aggressive, but you also don't want to make it easy if they break one tackle that they can go. That's right. So you see, in fact, Brady Brandon, the safety, is kind of making sure he doesn't get himself tied up. Oh, he's got an escort out there. And he's going to break through, knocking him out of bounds, actually knocking him down, or Miller and Chapman on the far side. But a good gain for Braden Johns, and you can see. That was your basic student body left. And he's just got an extra gear. Yep. Good block on the outside to take the corner out of it. It looked to me like Cameron John sealed the secondary man uh, the had contained, sealed him into the inside and left that running lane open on the outside for his brother. Another first down. This time they'll bring it out to the right side. And that's, looked like Tucker Nelson. I think Chris Pitcock tripped him up. Short gain on the play. No, I'm sorry, that was Corbin Haley. Called his number a couple times tonight. That may be the last play of the half in the, or quarter unless these guys hurry. They're down at 10 seconds. They should be able to get this snap off to come up and call the cage quickly. And they will just under time. And Whoa. just tripped up or he would have been all the way to the end zone but it will be a first down on the last play of the quarter. And you can see, wow, no just mind. a shoestring yeah. brings him down. Nice drive right now by the Coshocton Redskins. They haven't, you know, they've maintained their poise. Nice steady drive down the field. Cut this thing to a, a little more manageable score if they can get this thing in the end zone. They're down 19, but threatening will be back after this timeout. First down and 10 for the Coshocton Redskins. So we start this fourth quarter on the WHIZ-TV 
game of the week. We are at Village Park in Crooksville and the hometown ceramics leading at 40 to 21, but Coshocton trying to get themselves back into it. They're gonna throw it on first down. And they try to go a little flare pass after faking it to him. Going into the flat was Cameron Johns and they can't quite get it his way. And yep. nice play design, but just a little bit behind him. Excellent play call. I mean, they, they ran the ball down the field. Uh, been running it down Kirksville's throat, much like Kirksville had been doing to them. And on first and 10 from the 13, they come out with a play action pass and the guy's wide open and just can't execute it. So second down and 10. Well, this is where a defensive stand right here could really take the air out of the uh, seals for the Redskins. Be definitely an exclamation point. Williams rolling, looking and a little bit too tall, trying to get it out there to Kobe Rust. I saw a defender out there. Colt White. Colt White put his hands up. He didn't look back for the ball, but the hands are up. And I think he may have de deflected or at least blocked the guy's vision. Third yep. and 10. Boy, I, boy, I really felt like Kashokton was doing what they do best. You know, running the ball up the middle, running the ball on the perimeter, getting big chunks of yardage, and they get down first and 10 at the 13 yard line and they put the running game on the shelf and threw yeah, the ball twice. Yeah, they had the ceramics on their heels. Now the Crooksville can pin their ears back a little bit here. Four wide receivers in this set. Trips to the left here to the near side. Oh, Going he's to open the end by zone himself. And nobody there. Just a missed coverage and it is Rust that makes the catch and gets the Coshocton Redskins on the board here in the second half for the well, first time. Uncontested touchdown. That just a, a little too easy. Blown coverage. That comes from 14 yards out. And 11.44, they actually scored with 11.44 in the first quarter too. So if you're a numbers person or just going OCD like me, and they are going yep. for two. And play action again, looking for Rust, and he'll score all eight points. Well, that's just too easy. Possession. So Kashokton comes right back after the Crooksville touchdown, score a touchdown themselves, add two, and just like that, it's forty to twenty-nine. Let's see how Crooksville responds. We'll be back right after this. Boy, those guys on the far side. Those guys on the far side look like something might be uh, up here. Yeah, Kashokton kicking off after cutting the lead to 11, their first score of the second half, and they're going to kick it deep. Ethan Sprankle, and he'll get out over the 20, 25, 30, and 35. Good field position for the Ceramics. Take coach. This calls for maybe just a long drive, take a lot of time off the clock, and score taking advantage of your running game. Well, nice tackle by Wesley Prince for the Redskins. I'm, I'm going to say, <laughs> uh, knowing those guys on that offensive staff for Crooksville, and this could be a one over the deep middle. I want to try to take uh, advantage those guys, here. Those guys, uh, they want to get every uh, every ounce of air out of that ball they can. I mean, they want that thing to be thrown. Well, they're short an offensive lineman here. There yeah, we go. Getting out there, Thane Childress. And there is no safety in the, well, sort of little, kind of, but not in the middle. Chapman going to get it. Hits the left tackle hard, and he'll get it out to the 40-yard line. Pick up a four on the play. Well, the clock is definitely uh, Kishokton's uh, other opponent right now. I mean, it's going down to the 11-minute mark, but that's, the, that's not uh, – you can't really start playing the clock at 11 minutes if you had the ball. You still have to play the game. Yes, you do. Second down and six. Chapman again, and he's going to get a first down. Well, that's he, exactly what they need to do. What I like about his game is there are times when he needs to wait to kind of read a hole, and there's times like that where he just sees it and goes. Well, that time the linebacker that was in on the play, he was blocked all the way down the field. And, uh, and finally, uh, slowed down enough <laughs> to make the tackle. I mean, he was actually pushed down the field about 10 yards. So first down and 10 near midfield now for Crooksville. 
And again, they're gonna try to take some time off the clock here. Again, there's not a play clock in the facility. They'll wait for the back judge, perhaps. Puts his hand up with five seconds. And this is, uh, if Woody Hayes isn't busy wherever he is these days, <laughs> he's looking down and uh, enjoying this part of the game. I'm telling you, I, I think uh, we may go from methodical to monotonous if they run the ball down the field on the fullback, fullback dive. Well, and I got to tell you, that time, the center, Chris Pitcock, did a whale of a job in the middle of the field. He is. Driving down. We all know the centers are the smart guys well, on the offensive line. Make no mistake, I, I love this kind of football. <laughs> and again, just taking their time. They'll get a signal from offensive coordinator and ready to go. This time Chapman, although he ends up getting a couple yards where he shouldn't have got any. I think it's Carr. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. It is Carr. And Carr, if you'll watch, at the end of that, he puts his head down and just tries yep. to get what he can. Yep. Well, I think he was going to try to. Oh, that's. Pitcock is out. He's uh, got a problem here. And that's a big loss yes, for the is. ceramics. Looks like Bradley Ray in I mean, to take your, his spot. That's your center. Bradley Ray, sophomore. And good snap back on his first time, and Carr's going to run ahead. He's got a first down inside the 35. Well, you bring your backup center in and run that play and get a first down. You're living a charm life. Nice block that time by Bradley Ray, 6'1", 175-pound sophomore, now the center. Now he'll come out, but well Great done job. on that play. Well done. Come off you the know, I worry about like that. as an old man. center, I can tell you that oh, first snap having to go oh, back. Man, I mean, yeah, the adrenaline is flying. We were lucky that thing didn't land on the star. Could you, you usually ask a coach, could you put him under center this time, coach? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Just let me get one in my in Whoa, my look out, look out. Miller decided to pull it back at the very last second, and he'll get something where not much was available. Well, the car's looking at his wristband with the play calls on. Uh, he went, he was headed for St. Louis, and... Uh, Miller was headed for New York City, and buddy, I tell you what, never the twain was going to meet on that one. And Miller ends up getting five yards on the play when really shouldn't have got anything. Another reference to, from Miss Eckler from my eighth grade. Uh, Nicely uh, done. Uh, Nicely. They say that doesn't stick with you, Coach. Well, if you'd have had Miss Eckler. Yeah. Is that right? Oh, yeah. She was, uh, <laughs> now, if I asked you what you had for breakfast, would you remember no that? No idea. <laughs> Car up oh, look at that. And he breaks free on his way, and he'll be down inside. The 10-yard line. Man, he put that shoulder and head down and burst through that line of scrimmage and, and then looked up and thought, what? What? But look <laughs> at the I'm, crease. I'm, I'm open. What? Look at the nice crease. Nice blocking. Man, I tell you what. P.J. Moralt turned his guy around in a step. Carr again up the middle. And he'll spin and work his way forward. Did they lose uh, the ball? The ball came loose. Uh, I think Crooksville got back on it. One of the tree hitters landed on it. Brand, look like Brandon Wisson came up with that fumble. Nice job. Take yeah. up about four. So second down and goal. But yeah, he uh, you can see here, Coach. Let's see if he does comes. Oh, this is the long it's, run. Yeah. And what a job he did. I saw the ball pop out. But uh, Crooksville it, it, able to get back on it. So, second down and goal at the six. Miller just calls his own number. Yep. Heads toward the pylon, cuts in, and he'll drag tacklers down to about the one. It'll be third and goal. I like that about Cade Miller. I mean, yeah, okay, he just puts it on his shoulders, says, here I come. Took Stop four tacklers. You bet. And there's no way to fall in a five-player scrum that's comfortable. <laughs> Just can't be done. I like it. Get up in there. He's going to call his number again. And Touchdown. Nice lead blocked by Carr. And just like that, Crooksville finds their way back to the end. So actually, that's Chapman in there. That A beautiful block to create the space for Miller to get into the end zone. Would you have believed we were going to see Crooksville run the ball like this after watching them last week at no. Morgan when it, it was like an aerial circus? Yeah, no, I would not. Okay, I'm going to go officially go from methodical to monotonous. <laughs> but monotonous in an affectionate way. Oh, 
There's no doubt. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in, in, in my offensive mind, that's, that's the highest compliment you can have. Crooksville going to go for two. And I think they got it. A little shovel pass. And, yep, they're in the end zone. Colt White gets in, and we got some players down. Let's make sure everybody is where they're supposed to be. Is referees kind of while well, we're waiting for the call. Well, usually when you fall into the end zone with it, it's, a, it's good. Well, I don't know what the discussion is. It either is no or idea. it isn't. What? What? I don't recognize those hand signals. No, nope, I good. believe that there two point go. is good. There we go. We know yeah. that one. So Crooks folks hits in, gets the two point. They go up 48-29. We'll take a timeout, be back with more fourth quarter action right after this. Well, we figured out, Coach, what the call was. There it was a penalty that was going on around the goal line on that two-point try. And it was a uh, personal foul against Coshocton. So Crooksville will kick it off from the Coshocton 45. And I want to see if he can put it through the upright. Let's see if he tries to do that. Just don't kick it to number three. He may not even be in the game. He got really slowly on that last play. So he kicks it. It's close. It's through. It's through. He did it. <laughs> if we were at if we were in Australia, it would be, what, worth 12 points? And you have the guy with the little hat and the thing <laughs> and the, yeah. You know, that was what I, speaking of, that was one of my favorite memories of the early ESPN was all the Australian rules football. <laughs> we don't see that much anymore. Love that. Well, you were in the vast minority of that uh, Apparently. affection. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> they did not keep it around. No. So it goes out of the end zone, almost out of Village Park. And Kachokton will have it at the 20 now trailing 48 to 29 under seven minutes to go in this one well, you had to believe that shotgun is going to start mixing up their, their passing attack real quickly here it comes and the pass a Whoa. little too tall when pass incomplete. and gavin williams the quarterback senior six foot 155 pounds and he's got some options out there to throw to yes, he does. they had a 72 yard scoring play at the end of the first quarter, went out to Shook. The Crooksville secondary that time, uh, I mean, they were up tight. I mean, they were really close to the line of scrimmage. You I think was they're daring them a little bit? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I think uh, I think they may not want to play truth or dare at this point and give yeah, them yeah. the cheap touchdown. Now they're backed off a little. Looks like they're in a straight man cover. Going deep. Got a player down there, and it is incomplete. He just the ground, he could not haul it in. He had to stretch out. Trying to grab it was Garrett Rice. All right now, Colt White needs to put the uh, fire out on that uh, talent trailing off his belt because he got burned big time. Well, you know what? He got caught looking into the backfield. Yes, and he just did not, his first move wasn't back. You know, that's the old, what they teach the outfielders to do in baseball. Your first, your first move is back and then you can come in not the other way around. I think he's expecting a little help from the inside that time, and the safety stepped up too. So instead it falls incomplete. Makes it third and ten. Williams. Good coverage. And really good coverage there. Outstanding coverage. There wasn't an open receiver anywhere on the field. Tyler Rambo locked it down that time for Crooksville. Make it fourth and ten, and I don't think you can go for it down here. That's this, is, it, this is one of those that really doesn't matter. One way, I mean, you're in a tough spot if you're Kashokton, no matter what That's you right. do. Let's see if they try any trickery uh, as they I, did earlier in the game. You know, why not? Yep. Let's see if he then tries tried to kick it last time. And Crooksville going to take over on downs. Yeah. He has the option. We saw him kick it doing that last time. This time he was desperately looking for somebody to yeah, throw Yeah, I to. think that was a throw all the way. I mean, he's got the ball in a, in a throwing position. There's no way he could have punted that thing if he wanted to. 
Nice job that time by the Kirksville defense. Give up a little bit of yards, not near enough for the first down. Take over on downs and, and uh, call the dogs and put out the campfire, boys. <laughs> this one's over. P.J. Moralt kind of finished things off out in space. Good for a lineman to get out there and show what he can do. Then he'll turn around and line up at the right tackle spot. And Crooksville getting the young guys in there now. As in a quarterback is Noah Dickerson. And he's going to keep it himself, and why not? <laughs> Down to the 16. You bet. <laughs> get me, get in the stat book. And he'll get the carry. He's, he's the punter, so he does get his name in there no matter what, or usually. And he's a good, solid backup quarterback. No, he is, and he's got a nice arm, too. Only a sophomore. Chapman's still in there behind him. That's the uh, starting offensive line. So about the only uh, only pup in there I see is him and maybe uh, number 11, Sky Moore. Chapman on that carry. Again, it's just take some time off the clock now if you're Crooksville. And again, Chapman's had a whale of a game tonight. Boy, he has. And uh, he better be buying uh, – some pizza at the, at the B and B snack bar yes for the sir. Uh, offensive lineman. Yes, sir. In fact, I was going to say that. He'll get the ball. Nope, hanging on to it is Dickerson, and good effort to come get him on the Kashocton side by Corbin Haley, who's also had a good game tonight. But you know, we don't we don't do a player of the game at our level. WHIZ does during the week, and we'll leave them with that. But I might nominate this Crooksville offensive line tonight. Oh my goodness. What a group. They made a what lot a of unit. I mean, they, uh, they absolutely dominated this game. I mean, they were definitely the difference in this ballgame tonight, Kevin. It allowed the ceramics to feature a lot of guys running the football. Miller ended up doing well from his quarterback spot as a running back. Chapman, of course, also running the ball tonight was Tyler Carr. Well, when you're gashing the defensive line with, with the fullback dive, yeah. It's just a matter of time for a, a quarterback like Miller is going to pull that thing out and, and he's going to have wide open spaces to run. There's Look Carr. At this one. Wow. Did he get in? Yeah. Eh, going to be a little bit short. Well, what you you know, when your first contact as a on a dive is six or seven yards down the field. As a fullback. That's amazing. Yeah, that's right, the fullback. And there you see Carr just not going down with the easy contact. And so... It's second and goal for Crooksville. Well, Tyler Carr is 5'9", 145. Chapman, 5'9", 164. So we're not talking about the Zonka twins. And it's going to be Dickerson. All right. The backup roller quarterback gets there and there, makes a count as he runs it into the end zone. Uh, that's a 50-burger hanging on the scoreboard against the Redskins defense. Still 413 left to go, but... This second half, Crooksville is just running away. They scored 28 in the first half. Well, in, in fairness to Kishok, and Coach, Coach Jim Woodrum went for the uh, went for the first down deep in his did. own territory. Gave Crooks, knowing, knowing that if they didn't make it, Crooks was going to have an extremely short field to pump one more in. And we got some flags flying. Somebody moved. Well, I think the, uh, the, the guy on the far end for Kishok and uh, you know, fainted that here I come, and and uh, the Kirksville player couldn't resist and, and took a step. Should not affect uh, McClain. McClain. Oh my gosh, no! I mean, you know, all he's got to do is, is just focus and kick, and th this thing will be uh, through the uprights. Brady Brandon on the hold. Good snap, good hold. Kaboom. And I, I think the long snapper in there, just so we recognize, I think it's Braden Cavaney in the middle of the field coming in and getting it done. So, Crooksville stretching things out. Their third score of this fourth quarter. 4-13 to actually second score of this fourth quarter. Well, there's one more thing I want to. Yeah. All, the, all these public address announcement we've been hearing it come from Butch Wolf. This is his 50th year behind the mic oh, here. Oh, that's not possible, is it? You that's bet. That's something. Yes, it is. Butch 50 has, years. Butch has been an absolute asset to Kirksville football and Kirksville athletics. Uh, 
that entire time. He's been a coach here. He's been a head coach. He's been an assistant. He uh, takes care of the equipment on, on Friday nights for us. Uh, he hooked up all the phones. And, uh, you know, when, when back in the day when you had cords and, and all that kind of stuff, Butch was in charge of that. And, and uh, so I, I just don't think Kirksville Athletics, I know Kirksville football I don't think could exist without Butch Wolf. Well, hats off to him. We had a chance to talk to him. I've talked to him before the game tonight a little bit. Yep. Yep. And if you want some information about how things are going, he's got it. He's oh, no doubt. No doubt. Let's see if McLean and he's going to send it down about the one yard line. And good coverage by the ceramics. Excellent coverage. Since the opening kickoff, uh, the kickoff coverage really hasn't been an issue for the ceramics. Right. Done a nice job. And again, that was a bit of a surprise. We didn't think they were going to kick it deep on the opening kickoff. <laughs> no. Well, you know, I'm going to have to give one to uh, Casey on that one, too. I mean, yeah, come on. Give us a hint and then kick that thing deep. I know. And, and then he paid he for it. That was bad karma. Yes, Don't lie to us. That's right. By the way, great camera work on that replay right there. I believe that was John Cox, right? On the replay shot from the ball off the tee. Very artistic. So first and 10 for Coshocton. And they've got some new guys in there now, too. At the quarterback spot is Abe Jarvis, the sophomore quarterback. So we may be seeing the guys we'll see in this small division of the MVL right. well, in the years coming up. We're still seeing Cameron Johns, though, at running back. <laughs> there are going to be some people seeing him in their dreams because oh, he, uh, he brings it. i tell you what. Uh, congratulations, Coach Valley. I mean, a tough start. Lost the first four games. They've come back now with two wins. Uh, I just want you to know that your father, Joe, would be really proud of you tonight. That's well said. Of course, what a, you come down to a place, 100 years of football down here, right? Oh, my. Oh and my, uh, yes. you mentioned people that have been intertwined in this thing. And well, I, you know, I, I've seen uh, Crooksville fans tonight that, uh, you know, were at every game all the time that I was here as a coach. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Kirksville faithful are just that. Yep. They're faithful. Well, I think the other day, last week we were both here to interview Coach Valley, and I think the nicest compliment maybe you've ever got, I could tell it meant something <laughs> to you, was so when he said, you're not a Crooksville, you're not from Crooksville, but you're a Crooksville guy. <laughs> I know that meant a lot to you. It did. It really did. Fumble, but grabbing hold of it is Haley, and he'll try to do something with it. But, you know, when you, uh, people ask me about this all the time when I'm traveling around, and you see you just didn't get a handle on it. But what's the difference between Southeast Ohio and the MVL and other places in the state where football is lagging just a little bit? And I explained to them, it's when you go down to places in the MVL and you see people in the stands, it's just not the parents that have kids playing. That's right. It's people that have been had the same seat forever. <laughs> That's exactly you know, right. Or like a PA announcer who's been here for 50 years doing various yep. things. That's the difference. It just becomes a family. It's a culture. It's the way you spend Friday night. Good running. Thought we may see a little bit more of this from this young man tonight, but Kirk's been able to keep him in check most of the night. But Cameron Johns able to break away for a good game that time. I would say between the offensive line play for Kirksville and the defense's ability to shut this young man down, uh, wow, what a game plan that the Kirksville staff came up with and how well their players executed perfectly. I mean, it was just a perfect uh, game plan. And hats off to the ceramics. I mean, they came in. Uh, this team scored 60 points last week against the uh, New Lexington Panthers. Go to the traditional T formation. Hand off again to Cameron Johns. He'll, he's a senior, but the Braden Johns, number three, his younger brother will be here. Well, I guess, well, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be rescheduled, so it could be back here next year. It's not necessarily a home and home because it'll be a whole new league next year, so things could go anyway. You just never know. Clock running. We're down to about a minute 30 to go in the game. You know, Coshocton would like to get a score on the board just to give him some momentum for next week. Finish strong. 
You always want to finish strong. Of course, new quarterback in there for him is Abe Jarvis. I like to see a young guy named Abe, and he'll try to fit it in there in double coverage. <laughs> That's one they'll look over again a couple of times in the film room and explain to the sophomore why that might not have been his best option. Young quarterbacks see two things. They see the receiver and they see the pass rush. And <laughs> that, that's they, all. And that's all. Yeah. And first the only thing they see is the pass rush. Uh, then they'll get to where they see the receiver, but they see nothing else. There could be 10 black shirts down there, but if they see a flash of white, he's got to be open. It's got to be a third down and short. Let's see if they just try to get the first down here. And play They're going action. And got a receiver, and it is complete for a first down. Plante's nice got throw. a nice arm. Yes, he does. Good throwing motion. So it'll be first down. Still can get a first down. It's at the 11. But the clock running down now inside a minute. Both teams have their full complement of timeouts, but I don't think either team is going to burn any of them. Remind everybody, next week we'll be at Sheridan as Tri-Valley comes to town. And good defense will stop Cameron Johns, keep him outside the five. So ought to be a good one next week. Hope you can join you us. Bet. Uh, Tri-Valley has the opportunity to make a 37-way uh, tie for first place if they can knock off the uh, Generals, we, we heard uh, tonight was having a, uh, a pretty good game in their game tonight, so hopefully uh, oh, I think we're gonna have a that'll, dandy. that'll be a big game. Looking to throw. Receiver oh. almost intercepted. And that's Miller. Had Miller caught that, I would have enjoyed watching him come up oh, the near sideline. tell line. you what. Not sure anybody would have been there. You can see here. And yeah. I think he uh, he's thinking the same thing. As a young quarterback, if you're going to make a mistake, you need to make it to the outside. <laughs> not, you bet. Not to his inside. But again, this is a good learning experience to get Abe Jarvis in here and That's get right. him some game experience. Because he's probably going to be the guy next year. Starting quarterback Gavin Williams is a senior. Okay. See how the secondary plays this. Looks like number 12 is going to be the, uh, the man here. Watch out. Maybe time for couple oh. of plays. Now it's going to go on the ground. So yep. we're going to see one more play. Nope, they're not going to call the timeout. So that is going to do it tonight. And Coach, we were tied at one point, 21 to 21. And then after that, Crooksville found that running game. Oh, my goodness. And just not only controlled the field, but controlled the clock. That's right. I mean, shades of Crooksville passed on that running game. That gives the ball to the fullback and <laughs> turn him loose. I'll be interested to hear your conversation with Coach Valley where you, you use the word monotonous. <laughs> See how he reacts. I was well, just going to say one, uh, 21 wedge. 21 wedge. Oh, no, oh, oh, 22 wedge. Woo, boy. They ran it to perfection. <laughs> and did. we enjoyed watching. Always glad to be here. And there you see 55-29 after a first quarter where shocked and led it by a touchdown. It was all Crooksville here at Village Park. It was, a, it was a fun game to watch for the Ceramic Faithful tonight. Coshocton, boy, they've had some tough ones this season, and they'll keep laboring on for Crooksville. They play here at home. It's homecoming next week. It'll be new likes coming to town. That ought to be a good one. That's a, that's a heated rivalry right there. Well, we've enjoyed bringing it to you tonight. Our final score, 55-29, to 29, Crooksville over Coshocton here at Village Park. For my broadcast partner, the coach, Doug Clifford, I'm Kevin Rao. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Brian. We're here at Crooksville's Village Park. Kevin Rao, Doug Clifford, the coach. And it was a slugfest, would you say, tonight? <laughs> oh, no doubt about it. We had running where we didn't think we would. We had kick returns. In fact, let's look at a couple of those to start at the ball game. I've never seen it before, coach. Back-to-back -back kickoff returns for touchdowns. I mean, uh, that doesn't happen very often. Braden Johns, a junior for Coshocton, led off the scoring, taking it 98 yards. That's the opening kickoff and showed great speed. Now you say to yourself, well, what does Crooksville do in response to that, Coach? Well, you know, the, the wind definitely left the sails there for a little bit until uh, 
Brandon took over. Brady Brandon. He'll return the favor and go 93 yards. Some pretty nifty moves there. Oh, and then got some help. Moves. Guys making good blocks downfield to help him get in the end zone. So we were tied at seven. Kashockton comes right back, though. And on their next drive, it's Williams, the senior quarterback, rolling, looking, and he finds Shook, who then turns on the Jets. And he'll take it 72 yards for the next score. Kashockton on top at that point, 14 to 7. He looked like he was late for class, didn't he? He was gone. Crooksville gets up by a touchdown, but then a pass to Rust from Williams gets him into the lead. But the last two touchdowns would go to the Crooksville Ceramics as Miller, the quarterback, gets in, and then the backup quarterback gets in. That's Dickerson. And just like that, Crooksville with the big win tonight here, 55 to 29. You see how it broke down in the quarters there. Coshocton up early, Coach, but Crooksville with their running game tonight gets it done. The offensive line for Crooksville dominated the line of scrimmage. The defense put Coshocton in third and long on a consistent basis, and that's not their strong suit in the wing tee to, to deal with that kind of a problem. And it was a great game plan and executed perfectly by the Ceramics. 55-29, the final here at Crooksville. The Ceramics at home and on top. Back to Friday Night Blitz. <laughs> 